What is going on, guys? Welcome to episode 10, 9, 10, and 11 of the Kill Switch Chronicles. But before we get into that, let me show you something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17. I've got 17 titles out of 29 cars. So I'm waiting on 12 more titles. For all of the haters, he found this in those cars. Weep, weep on your bitter tears, bitch. Weep. Because I ain't financing no cars. All right. We got the corporate papers going, and I need to impress upon you guys, you need to get in now. I know many of you will wait until the price goes up and then you will pile in the end of the month. All right, today's the 10th. You're already a month behind. There is a month of material for some people, depending on how fast, some people move fast and get it done in two weeks. Uh, and these are things you have to do, and we're taking look in a sensible, logical manner because first you gotta build your holding company and your operating company and then there's some other stuff that you gotta do and I've revamped the corporate papers I've added more there's literally depending upon what kind of student you are there's a month to six weeks of work waiting on you to be done so you can start building your corporate empire and I'm not gonna lie to you you're looking at a two to three year journey starting from scratch so the sooner you start that's the sooner you'll get there so stop waiting the links below all right so let's go off with the first kill switch story which is kind of boring right um guy rented the car contacted him he didn't answer contacted him he didn't answer so i woke up he was at about 20 hours cut it off right and he was still moving. So the kill switch doesn't cut the car off while it's moving. It only cuts it off when it stops and they cannot restart it. Guess where he stopped? Gas station, second gas station stop. And I get an instant phone call because I'm sitting there watching where he's going. And I see he goes to his gas station and literally three minutes later, I get this call. It's like, hey, the car's not working. Oh my goodness. Really? Do this. Leave the key in it and I'll come get a tow truck. Okay, okay, and he was so concerned and everything, went like a charm, my assistant took me out there, started that bad boy up, drove it off, and had half a tank of gas, so that was a win. So this kill switch story is gonna be before. This is kill switch story, actually 11, but I'm gonna do it before kill switch story 10, because kill switch story 10 is very, very interesting. So, had this guy rent the car, and he's a speeder. He took the car up to 120. I will admit this car will get up on you. It, it's very, very sneaky how fast this car can be. And he was just like, you know, and I, 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 I contacted him, no response. I tried to call the number, number didn't work. I'm like, oh hell. And uh, me and my assistant we were looking at it and it was, the car was in Lithonia and I was just like, <sighs> and it was like 5.30. If you know anything about Atlanta, Getting from 285 to I-20 at 530 is a nightmare. There's massive channel. I said, you know what? Just come in early in the morning. We'll get the car in the morning and everything. So we, we, sh we shut the office down for the day. We go home and then I get a call from him. He's like, hey, the car doesn't work. And I was like, oh my goodness. And then he, like Kill Story Switch number 11, he was very, he's like, is this car, you turned it off because I haven't paid? And at that point, I was kind of, you know, it was a long day and I was just like, I didn't even feel like keeping up a, a facade. I was like, yeah. He's like, I was going to put some cash on the car. I was like, you gotta pay for it before I turn it back on or I'm just gonna come get it in the morning. Five minutes later, give the call back. I paid, look in there, he paid two days. Five minutes later, turn, I turned the car back on because I did not want to, uh, actually he paid one day because he brought the car back. Uh, I didn't want to go to Lithonia because uh, when we're getting the kill switch story number 10, you, you will understand. 
So uh, actually, he returned the car and he was real cool and everything. And that car going back out tomorrow. So it worked out really well. He paid. He brought the car back. He didn't go late again. And I feel that he knows next time he rents from me that I have the ability to turn off the cars. I don't think I'm having any problems out of him. Uh, he did not bring it back with gas, but he gave me cash money. I misestimated, so I lost like 10 bucks, but he rented the car and he paid 390 on the rental. So I didn't really lose a lot of money on that. So that went really, really well. And it makes me, cause you know, um, like I said, uh, kill switch story number 10. <laughs> this, this right here. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Number 10. She shows up to pick up the car. And my spotty sense was like, do, 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 do. My assistant saw her and who brought her up. And she said, I don't know about them. The way they were sitting in the parking lot with the doors open, there's just, and I, I had a feeling she was going to be trouble. But she, she ran the car for two days. That's typically a danger sign. And day one went by, day two went by, boom, instantly late, instantly late. And I'm like, okay. So I cut her off at 12 hours. Now here's the issue with her. The car was one hour away. She lived in Stockbridge. And I was just like, cause remember, I, I think I even did a community post. Was like, I hope she doesn't turn into a yard bird. Cause I, I mean, but we turned the car off. And I told her to leave the key in the car, not once, not two, but three times. So we get to the car, and this is where the story goes haywire. The front bumper is hanging off the car. She didn't tell me about that. So at this point, I am pissed. I call her up, she answers. I cuss her out so hard, so furious, that she called hire car to complain about me. I said, you worthless piece of shit. You trash my car. You ain't paying me, you stupid ass hoe. That's what I said, exactly. I went off on her. I went off on her. My assistant was sitting there like, oh. I was cussing her out. And then we get the car. Car smells like weed. So she's smoking weed, driving my car, and she ran over something. And she was like, well, the car's like that when I was renting. I'm like, bitch. I got pictures to prove that it wasn't like that. Stop lying. Be accountable. Be an adult. Stop flaking the fuck out. And then, you know, she told me the car was low on oil. So she, she wanted me to turn that car on because she's, she's attractive. And we're, this, 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 this will play into the rest of the story. She's attractive and she tried to woo me and to turn the car on like, hey, turn the car on. I'll go get some money, put it on the car. Now, she is not telling me that the bumper is hanging off the car. So she would have drove this car with the bumper hanging off on low oil and she would have messed it up. And she kept going on because she wanted the black diesel. And I'm being very protective of my diesel. Because uh, I actually priced it for 90 bucks because a lot of people want that car. And I'm just sitting there like, mm, no, 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 no. And she's like, this ain't even the car one. The transmission is messed up and this and this. And the bumper was like this. And I was like, no, it wasn't. And my assistant drove the car back. And my assistant got up to like 110. And she's like, there ain't nothing wrong with that car. She said, it is sneaky fast. It's like, I look down, because my assistant, she's an aggressive driver. <laughs> she, she drives a truck normally. She'd she be whipping that truck. And uh, I was like, yeah, there ain't nothing wrong with that car. So I spent Saturday morning, you know, because I took it to get an estimate, $2,700 to have that bumper fixed properly. And I took some picture hanging wire, went through the hooks and stuff, and I, I feel that I secured the bumper on there good enough to get by that because essentially I don't feel like getting off $2,700 because one of the reasons I went off it, I am sick and tired of people fucking up my cars. I'm like, how fucking hard is it to put the key in and drive? I've been in one accident in my life, one, but I don't smoke weed. I don't drink and then drive. I don't do any of those dumb things. And I'm just sitting here like, 
I, I snapped. I snapped. I went off on her so hard. And fortunately, this car had a second key because I knew she wasn't going to leave the key. I knew because she figured out instantly that I turned the car off. She figured that out. I mean, her message, she's like, did you turn the car off? I didn't even answer her. I was like, leave the key in the car. We'll come get it. That's, that was my whole point. Because something told me to go get that car. Because if I had turned that car back on, even if she had paid me, she would have did way more damage to it, messed it up, and I rented that car out yesterday to another guy. So I picked up the car Monday and I rented it out Tuesday. So these GPS kill switches are the truth because what they do is they stop the animal from messing up your car because essentially I took some oil down there, I put oil in it because I know she didn't put oil in it. And I, I was just like, mm -mm, you, you getting out of this. And I cussed her out. And then she was like, I can bring the key to you. Like after I cussed her out, she's like, I can bring the key to you. And I'm about to say something, fellas. Sometimes cussing a woman out will turn her on. I know that sounds strange, but sometimes cussing a woman out will turn her on. And I will say slapping the woman will turn some of them on. Some of them will call the cops on you and some will give you the nappy dugout old school reference with vigor but i feel that she got kind of turned on because i cussed her out i ignored the fact that she's attractive and this is the thing she has seven kids seven kids why are you renting a car you should be renting a van smoking weed driving around and you know when I oil, I, I I was so pissed I didn't care. Like I, I put the oil in the car and I threw the bottles in her driveway. I didn't, I was like, fuck you, fuck you, fucking up my car. You only had the car three days, three days. And I just went off. I mean, and then her car her car called me and I said, look, yeah, I cussed her out. Sure did. And I'm gonna tell you why I cussed her out. Once you see the claim I'm going to put in, the front bumper's hanging off. That's going to be two to three grand to fix that. Then there's some other stuff. And she, if I had turned that car on, and I told him, I said, I turned the car off because she wasn't paying me. He says, I'm looking at her account. Yeah, she owes you for a day. And, you know, I, I went ahead and put the claim in because it's the basic plan. I'm not going to get reimbursed for the key or the bumper. However, until she pays off, it all came up to $3,100. Until she pays off $3,100, she cannot rent any more cars on hire car. I intentionally, I was like, my, like I told her, I said, when I'm done with you, you will not be able to rent another car on hire car unless you come up with $3,100 to pay me. And I would get that. So I'm still hot. I'm just sitting there like, what is it? So let's go ahead and talk about what happened. Um, The losses. I've experienced, I sold the Range Rover to CarMax this weekend for $8,700. I paid 16, almost $17,000 for this car, had a $2,300 repair, which brought me up to $19,000. The car made 1,500, Romy Rome. And then there was another rental. So I had a net loss of 8,500 on that Range Rover. And I'm gonna tell you guys why I sold it. He messed it up. Uh, there was some warning lights coming on. You know, like I said, there was $5,100 worth of damage. And I don't feel that car was ever gonna be right again. And this is one of the things that really hurt. I left the car on hire car and 12 people tried to rent it, 12. So he actually, cost me money by messing up the car. He cost me money by not paying me and he cost me money by keeping the car. So we're up to $22,000 in losses. This one renter did it. He kept the car. He got arrested. Uh, the Porsche, you know, the stolen Porsche. I lost four grand on that. This is the Acura that was wrecked. I paid 7,200 for it. I had to have it towed. I lost 6,200 on that. And this is the Camry that dude was driving with no oil on it that made 4,000. So I lost 3,600 on that. 
All of my losses have been because of bad renters. And I've implemented some policies and procedures where I'm not going to get them because uh, essentially I've raised the prices of all my cars. Uh, cars like, you know, I was trying to put cars in a reasonable rim, but all I was getting was trash renters. I was getting, I mean, the Acura. Like, I finally got the tires for the Acura. Uh, I'm going to see if it will pass emissions tomorrow because if it doesn't, pa if it passes emissions, I am not going to have it fixed. I'm just going to fix that rental and I'm going to rent it out as a hot rod. Just rent that bad boy out. And, you know, because essentially I am, it was 600 bucks for the tires. The cars made 2,500. So to get the window, they quoted me like 145 to fix the window. So if I can go ahead and rent that car out for the next year, then I will be well, well, well ahead. So that's what I'm going to do. And also, my GPS guy got COVID. I was checking on him today. He will not be back for two weeks. So I have not one, not two, but three brand new cars that I cannot rent out because I don't have a GPS tech in. Uh, I've got an appointment on the 20th and I got an appointment on the 25th that I need to cancel because uh, tomorrow I'm going to see if I can, you know, someone recommend a GPS installation company. I'm going to see if they can show up because right now I have those three cars. The Cyan, the Cayenne is at Porsche. Turn that car in Friday. They ain't even looked at it. Uh, it may be later in the week or even next week before I get that back. And then the Mercedes needs a headlight waiting on a headlight to come in. And th this is one of the hardest things is to keep all your cars rentable ready because there's always these little things. And like um, the new car, which is a, I think I did a, a little promo. I didn't do a promo in the beginning. I, I will do that later. Uh, Mercedes S550. That reminds me of the old cars. I mean, this car is huge. I mean, I can get on my knees in the back seat on the floor. That's how much room in there. I, I was like, this is a beautiful car. It's powerful. It's fast. And uh, I'm renting that for a hundred bucks a day. And for those of you who want to get in the car rental course, you're going to love it. My Toro strategy is working like a charm. I was able to talk a girl from a two day rental to a five day rental. Once again, most of these folks don't want to talk to customers. They don't want to, they, they, they don't know anything about building a business, but yeah. So it's getting better. It's getting better. Uh, this month I'm already at $8,000 for the month. So if I do 8,000, the next 10 days, they'll put me at 16. And if I do 10,000, you know, because essentially what's holding me up is I cannot put my whole fleet out because I got to get these GPS kill switches. I have learned my lesson. There is no way in hell I'm going to rent out a nice vehicle without a GPS kill switch. I'm not doing it. You know, um, these people, I never would take a rental car and keep it. That's just beyond me. But I was talking to one guy. He's like, man, they do this to boats jet skis they just take them and keep them just keep them and don't pay for them so lesson learned and essentially i am not running out the mercedes i got two i got a i got a bmw that's going to be a hot commodity it's black on black it's super clean it's just like the car that's going out tomorrow and hopefully i can find someone to put these gps kill switches in sooner versus later so I can get them up because I'm going to have to snooze them because uh, like this little white one, this light white one that's been modified. It's got a, an exhaust. I think it's got a chip in it because it is quick, super, super fast. But I am not putting that in the hands of the animals and the pricing is going to keep it out of the hands of the animals because like I said, I have learned my lesson. Um, I can rent out a Camry or one of the Acras, and when people are done with them, they just bring them back. But a BMW, a Range Rover, a Porsche, uh-uh. They're going to keep that or they're going to abuse it. And I am really pissed at Romy Rome because that car could have made me a lot of money. That car, a lot of people want that car, 
And if he was before me, I would slap him into a coma because these folks don't care about you. And it's only about their own self-indulgence, selfish needs. And like I said, you know, um, the kill switch stories are not going to be that dramatic because essentially I have put up a policy. I'm going to start cutting them off at 12 hours. They're not even going to get a full 24 hours because I have currently, let me see. I got the three new cars, the Acura. Oh, the X5 is at BMW. Strange, strange thing happened. I thought it was the key. It wasn't the key. The radio system in the car that unlocks the door and starts the vehicle is going bad and it has to be replaced. So I just took it to BMW because my guys have the Mini, they have the Mercedes, and they have the blue BMW. So essentially one of the things I do is once I know people are backed up, I'll just go to the dealership. Yeah, it's gonna be more expensive, but at least I'll get the car back quicker and then I can rent it out because uh, in the course, I'm gonna teach you guys so much. Some of the stuff I've been doing, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, it, it work, it's very effective, it's very effective. I have switched horses on a lot of people and nobody's complained yet and I'm going to keep doing it. So go ahead, get in the corporate papers now and start working because essentially like you guys have seen me with this car business in the last three months, the first two months were pure comedy, pure comedy because I, I, I had no clue what I was getting myself into. I had no clue, you know. Most of the information on YouTube is renting cars. It's easy, it's passive, it's not hard work. I have found that out to be fundamentally untrue. And if, but see, I care about my businesses. I care about my customers. So I'm not going to just sit back and try to collect money and not really do that much. I've had story after story after story from people who rented cars and hire cars saying, I showed up, the car was wrecked. I showed up, the car started funny and uh, I have people who've come back to me three and four times to rent cars because they know I take care of my stuff. So for you guys, uh, we're probably going to get, the day is Tuesday. I'm probably gonna start filling out that course sometime this week. Today, we had a really good day. Uh, once again, we had to go get the three cars back because the GPS installer has COVID. So we did that. I rented out two cars, I got one back, and I made it home at six o'clock. And I actually started work at nine. So we're starting to get more control. And I am actually finding out, and this will be in the course, that when they say they're bringing it back, I was like, be sure you bring it back with a full tank of gas. And I'm getting car back after car back with full tanks of gas, because it's annoying that you get your car back, it's dirty, you gotta clean it, then you gotta go get gas. And also, this is something else too, I bought an air compressor. If you have a fleet of cars, you're gonna have a lot of issues with tire pressure. They're gonna run over some, knock some pressure, the little light's gonna come up. So I bought a compressor and it worked well one time. One time, then it doesn't work anymore, so I'm sending that bad boy back and I'm getting ready to get a handheld vac because today the guy brought the car back and I didn't have time to take it to the car wash because they were closed. So, but I, I ran it through the automated car wash and that was good enough. The car is clean. It's just a little dirty on the inside, but not trashed. And essentially the guy who had it, he was actually working. And I've noticed that the people who are actually working, the cars are not that dirty. But the folks who ain't working, they trash them. They trash them, they trash them, they trash them. So, I feel that August is going to be my best month. I made like 17, almost 18 last month. I did 14 the month before that, and I did six before that. I think this is going to be my first $20,000 month, and it's going to, you know, and we're getting ready to go into my calendar year. And what I mean by that, September 1st is when I'm going to start my clock. I've been running experiments. I've been running tests. I've been trying different things. And from September 1st, that's when we go into business for real. So from September the 1st, 20, 2021 to September the 1st, 2022, that's gonna be our calendar year. And my goal is to have 100 cars 
by the end of next September. And that's what we're going to be shooting for, because that should give me about 150 to 160,000 a month top line revenue. And then there will be expenses and stuff. And I will have probably two employees because I can already see what the workflow is going to be, because like. 20, I have I have 29 cars. And with 29 cars, that is a full time job. So when I get to 60 cars, there's going to have to be two of us. And when I get to 90 cars, there's probably going to have to be three of us. So for every 30 to 40 cars, there will be one employee because there will be enough work with people renting, bringing back other things that we're doing. So by September, I should have three or four new employees. I got a bigger office to prep for that. I got to move a desk out of the basement into the office. Uh, my assistant, her truck's down, so I was going to use her truck, but I can get that over there. I got to buy a computer for the office and I got to get a phone in the name of Mac Daddy Autos to apply for my dealer's license. So I got the office, I'm on the marquee, I got the file cabinet, I gotta get the phone, and then probably by the end of September, I should be having my dealer's license, and I friended a few dealers so I can go to the auction with them. And I'm like, look, you know, I just wanna you know, go here, see what you do and everything, and I'm gonna buy one car per month, flip it, and take that money and just keep parlaying it and parlaying it and parlaying it. And I'll buy one car to sell, and then I will buy cars to rent and we will see how much money this saves me once I get my dealer's license. Because I'm gonna be in a little different spot than the average person because I'm gonna have real capital. I'm gonna be able to go to an auction with $50,000 cash and buy cars. I'm not gonna be using you know, credit until November, December. So I should be able to get some good deals and I'm just gonna buy clean cars. If the car's got issues, it's passing on by. And this is what I'm doing. Like everything I bought, I bought the Porsche, super clean. I bought the 535i, super clean. The 550, super clean. The 335d, super clean. I am not buying cars with issues. I'm not buying cars that need work. I'm not buying any, like I may actually sell the Camrys. I know, you know, people like, what? I may actually sell or trade out the Camrys. Um, I got to look at the numbers of how much money these cars have made because I'm going to take a little hit. But the Mini's gone once I get that fixed. And I may trade out the Camrys and I may have nothing but BMWs, Range Rovers, and Porsches. I'm serious. Because right now, the Camry has broken down. The 2012 Camry needs an alternator. And this Camry, this is the second time this Camry's been in the shop, second time. And you know, y'all keep like, Camry's are super reliable, your cars are trash. This car wasn't trash, doesn't have that many miles on it. And the kind of breakdowns that I'm getting with the Camrys and the Acuras are totally different than the breakdowns I'm giving to BMWs. I have been a BMW driver for 20 years. So I'm pretty, no, I'm pretty well versed on what goes wrong with them. And typically what goes wrong with them will not leave you stranded on the side of the road. And, you know, yeah, it can be expensive to fix depending on what it is, because I, I just bought this white one and damn it. None of the lights and stuff came on during the test drive. After I signed the paperwork, they put the dealer tag on. I'm rolling. Bam. All these lights popped on. I took it to my guy and we had some good news. The knee brakes. He said it probably just needs these speed sensors and all that to go away. That's pretty much a cheap fix. And I'm like, yes, because I paid 15K for that car. Another thing that I've done is all my nicer cars, I have full coverage. Liability doesn't protect you if someone steals your car. So any car that's likely to be stolen, the X5, the white X5, the blue X5, the Porsche, the Mercedes, uh, the new 550, the white 330, any of those cars, you know, they're 15,000 or more. I put full coverage on them because it would hurt if I went to work one day and saw that my best cars was gone. And I mean, this is a lot of money and it's just pretty cheap because essentially I won't use this insurance. You know, many of y'all ask me the insurance I use. I use Geico. I use the lizard, the gecko. And 
essentially I am never going to use that insurance for hire car. If a renter gets into it, cause I have one, two, three, I have four claims and I'm still waiting on the check for my first claim. And I, I emailed that lady and the email came back. So I'm like, Oh, that's not good. So we will see, but going forward, I feel that this month is going to be way better because I should have made 22,000 last month, but the yard bird contingency, Romy Rome, uh, and other people and the dude with the Acura, they were just keeping my cars and not paying me and refused to bring them back. And the second guy who left my car on the side of the road, I would slap him into a coma because if he had told me one day after he left the car on the road and I had it towed, the window wouldn't have been broke and the catalytic converter wouldn't have been gone. But if that car passes a mission without the catalytic converter, I'm not replacing it because that's going to be like 1200 or 1500 just right there. And one of the things I'm doing is managing cash flow and essentially um, I'm getting much better at it. And you know, the Mercedes, it doesn't need any work. The 550 doesn't need any work. The 335i needs speed sensors. The 335d needs brakes. I already know this is coming, but I'm managing my cash flow very well. So we're gonna, this is gonna be a great month. This is gonna be a great month. And there may be some more kill switch stories, because like I said, I am, you know, I, I was given them 24 hours, 12 hours, it's off. And I don't even worry about it because it's amazing how fast they call you when that car doesn't start. Amazing. All right, so that's all I got for you guys. Be sure to enroll in the corporate papers. You're already behind. And after Sunday, there's going to be some more exercises and things for you to do. Because essentially the way I'm designing the corporate papers is we drop training, you review training, and then there's training that you have to do. And then the doing is where your success lies, not in just consuming the course. That, that ain't going to do nothing for you. But actually doing stuff. Because this week, everyone should have their holding company. That's the goal this week. And if you don't, you're going to have to do that next week. And you're going to have to wait to address the next training because... The way that I'm designing this is step by step. You do this first, you do this second, you do this third, you do this fourth, step by step in a logical, sequential manner that makes sense and is doable. And once we get into the company building training, hold on to your hats. Because once again, I'm gonna say it, these fake YouTubers, they're talking about you can start this business. You know, they never get into the details of starting the business. They always talk about you can do it. You can make all this money. You can make all this money. But they never actually tell you how. You notice that? It's very interesting. And I got a video on Savage Finance talking about the holding company game because tomorrow I'm changing that number because I'm getting people tired of people calling me, asking me all these questions because essentially I have spent half a million dollars getting this corporate game. And if you want it, you're going to pay for it. If you don't want to pay for it, cool. God bless you. Go find someone else that you can think, because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be very egotistical. No one on YouTube can teach you what I'm going to teach you. You want to know why? They ain't doing it. They ain't doing it. They can't teach you what they don't know. I actually had two holding companies. I'm actually, how many of them will actually tell you the name of the company? Many of these guys, you don't even know their real name. Like I keep hearing Pushman Mitch. What is his real name? Y'all know my real name, Glendon Cameron. You can go to the internet and Google me, Pushman Mitch. What is his real name? What is his real name? You don't even know this fool's real name. But you're investing them. It's like, well, Pushman Mitch, so they can help on that Lambo, so that's a payday. All right, let, 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 let's go ahead and talk about this. If you own a Lambo and you wreck it, it ain't a payday. <laughs> the insurance company is not going to pay you over the, the, what the Lambo's worth. They're going to pay you just enough to get it fixed. That ain't a payday. And also, when that wreck hits the Carfax, it's going to depreciate the car even more because it's been wrecked. Fun fact, um, the Range Rover, and one of the reasons I got rid of that Range Rover as quick as I did, is once it hits that Carfax that the car was stolen, that depreciates the car even more. And I, I just wash my hands of it. I'm just like, you know what? Just get out of it. Go ahead and buy something else. Take the hit. And I'm going to do a show with all the numbers, what I spent, um, my total losses. My repair bills are approaching 50000 
And I feel that that's going to start to slow down because I'm buying better cars. I'm not buying any more 2006s or 2007s or 2008s. If it ain't a 2010 or 11 or 12, I'm not buying it. Because uh, the, the what's interesting, I, I, I should step back on that. The super clean BMW is a 2008, but it was a one owner. And they really took care of it. And it came from United BMW. And if it's clean like that, and I test drive it and there are no issues, I may consider it because I'm going to rent that car out for 70 bucks a day. So you know, it only cost me 10,200 bucks. A Camry would have cost me more. 2012, 14 Camry would have cost me more and I wouldn't be able to rent out a Camry for 70 bucks a day. So um, this month's going to be much better and we're going to start attacking the credit card debt. And this is something else that I've, I've figured out. I'm not going to buy, I might buy one more car this month. I keep feeling that. I might buy one more. That might get me to 30. Uh, I'm buying, I'm going to start buying the cars with my credit card. Cash back. I'm, this month, I've spent, I have to look, but I've bought five cars with the credit card and I estimate the cash back to be 2000 So if I can get additional cash back for something I'm going to do anyway, Oh, hell yeah, I'm going to do that. So that's one of the reasons. Like a month where I spend 100 k I think for, I don't, I don't have my, ca my calculator on me, but I think it's like 375 per 25000 So, oh, I have to look, but I think I spend $100,000. That's going to get me 1500 or 2000 back. And if I spend 200,000, that's going to be like $3,000 cash back. That's a lot of cash back. And I am going to start buying all of the cars with a credit card. And uh, I saw in the comments, someone's like, dear Lou, let me do that. You got to just talk to them the right way. Because essentially every time I do it, they'd be like, damn, it went through. They're shocked because they're not used to seeing someone with a massive credit limit. <laughs> There's a reason I got these secured cars for twenty five thousand. There's a reason because it gives me a lot of use. And uh, I'm going to get the one, the Mac Daddy Autos secured credit card paid off. And then I'm going to pay off the disruptive asset credit card sometime this month. And then I'm going to leave the disruptive asset credit card alone. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It just kind of depends. Because once I get it paid off, this gives me twenty five thousand to go buy another car. And essentially with higher car, I'm not the most car I'm going to buy. The most expensive car I'm going to put on higher car would be 30,000 because that's as much as the insurance goes. So I'm not going to put any 50, 60, 70 thousand dollars on higher car. And then Mercedes is coming off of higher car. Funny, I had a dude who wanted to rent it for seven days, but he, w he couldn't get approved. We will see. We will see. But that's all I got for you guys. Go below, get in the corporate papers. And I will see you guys in the next one. Because there will be more kill switch stories. There will be. There will be. Because yard birds are going to be yard birds.